This video will review some test questions you may see on the FAA Instrument Rating Written Test. These questions are suitable for study for any instrument rating test, whether it be an airplane, helicopter, or other instrument rating. Question 1. To act as pilot in command of an aircraft under IFR, what is the minimum instrument flight experience you must have logged during the preceding six months in the same category of aircraft? According to FAR Part 61.57, to act as pilot in command under IFR conditions, a pilot must have logged six instrument approaches in the preceding six months in the same category of aircraft. Additionally, the pilot must have practiced holding procedures and tasks and intercepting and tracking courses through the use of navigational electronic systems. The correct answer is A. Question 2. A certificated commercial pilot who carries passengers for hire at night or in excess of 50 nautical miles is required to have at least. According to FAR Part 61.133, pilots carrying passengers for hire on cross-country flights longer than 50 nautical miles or at night must hold a commercial pilot certificate with an instrument rating in the same category and class of aircraft. The correct answer is C. Question 3. When is an IFR clearance required during VFR weather conditions? Class A airspace starts at 18,000 feet MSL. All flight operations conducted in Class Alpha airspace require an instrument rating. The correct answer is B. Question 4. A pilot is making an ILS approach and is past the outer marker to a runway which has a VASI. What action is appropriate if an electronic glide slope malfunction occurs? and the pilot has the VASI in sight. If the electronic glide slope fails while on an ILS approach and the pilot has the VASI in sight, the pilot may continue the approach and use the VASI glide slope in place of the electronic glide slope. See Chapter 2-1 of the Aeronautical Information Manual for more information on aeronautical lighting and other airport visual aids. The correct answer is B. Question 5. What are the alternate minimums for an airport with a precision approach procedure? According to FAR Part 91.169, alternate minimums for an airport with a precision approach are 600-foot ceilings and 2 statute miles visibility. For non-precision approaches, the minimums are 800-foot ceilings with 2 statute miles of visibility. Since the question is asking what the alternate minimums are for a precision approach, the correct answer is B. Question 6. If the runway visual range, abbreviated RVR, equipment is inoperative for an instrument approach procedure that requires a visibility of 2,400 RVR, how should the pilot expect the visibility requirement to be reported in lieu of the published RVR? According to FAR Part 91.175, if RVR minimums are prescribed in an instrument approach but RVR minimums are not reported for the runway or are inoperative, the RVR minimums should be converted to the ground visibility as shown in the table on the right. An RVR of 2,400 feet equates to ground visibility of one-half statue mile. Therefore, the correct answer is C. Question 7. MEA, also known as minimum en route altitude is an altitude which assures. According to Chapter 1 of the Instrument Flying Handbook, the minimum en route altitude ensures adequate signal coverage for aircraft navigation and obstacle clearance, which is typically 1,000 feet in non-mountainous areas and 2,000 feet in mountainous areas. The correct answer to question 7 is C. Question 8. When the visibility is greater than 6 statute miles on a terminal aerodrome forecast, abbreviated TAF, it is. When the visibility is greater than 6 statute miles, the visibility will be expressed as P, 6, S, M on a TAF. See Chapter 27 of the Aviation Weather Handbook for more information on forecasts in preparation for the instrument rating written exam. The correct answer is B. Question 9. In what localities is advection fog most likely to occur? Advection fog forms when moist air moves over a colder surface. Advection fog is most common in coastal areas. The west coast of the United States is very susceptible to advection fog as moist air forms offshore and is blown towards land by the wind. 
See Chapter 18 of the Aviation Weather Handbook for more information on weather systems such as fog that can have an impact on visibility while in flight. Question 10. The Use of Airborne Weather Avoidance Radar The use of airborne weather avoidance radar gives information pertaining to the location of particles in the atmosphere that are of precipitation size or larger. However, airborne weather avoidance radar does not provide assurances of avoiding instrument weather conditions. The correct answer is therefore A. See Chapter 7 of the Aeronautical Information Manual and Chapter 10 of the Instrument Flying Handbook for more study resources on IFR flight, safety, and the impact of weather systems. Thank you for watching the video. Please like the video and subscribe for more educational videos on aviation-related topics.